Welcome back to Breathtaking and this week's exploration of Talking Blues. Today's offerings feature a delightful mix of humor and contempt. First up is Talking on American Blues by Betty Sanders, recorded around 1952 during the McCarthy era when hundreds of Americans were accused of being communists or communist sympathizers and became the targets of aggressive investigations and questioning before government committees. You'll notice that Betty Sanders mentions looking for un-Americans, a reference to the House of Representatives Committee on Un-American Activities, which, starting in 1947, began to subpoena citizens to testify about their known or suspected membership in the Communist Party, their association with its members, or their support of its beliefs. At these testimonies, what became known as the $64,000 question was often asked, are you now or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Many of those subpoenaed who were determined not to cooperate with the committee would claim their Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination. Actually, Betty Sanders can tell you all about these appalling aspects of the McCarthy era far more compellingly and entertainingly than I. One morning, got an invitation to help Congress out in an investigation. Man came around and knocking at the door, gave me a paper that said, what for subpoena? Looking for an Americans, look in the mirror. Now if you want an invite, here's what to do, you gotta talk for peace, sing it too. Visit your neighbors, hear what they say, before you know it, you're on your way, fair paid. Ride in style, first class. Well, you brush your hair and you dress real pretty. You got a date with the Un-American Committee. Take the stand, they swear you in. Old man Wood is wearing a grin. He thinks he's got you. Got a short memory. Can't recall what happened when they stuck a union label on his cantankerous investigation. Are you now or have you ever been? Were you ever sympathetic or interested in? When did you start? How long did it last? Tell us all about your interesting past. Answer yes or no. Did you go to a meeting? Did you sign a petition? Did you ever hold an executive position? Did you make a speech, carry a card? Did you ever hold a conference in your backyard? Fifth Amendment. Now they were asking questions, but we wouldn't buy it like those union brothers did it. It was time for us to try it. Added up the facts and the figures historical and asked them a question which sounds a bit rhetorical. Mr. Wood, are you now or have you ever been a bastard? You don't have to answer that question if you think it might tend to incriminate you. Now, Mr. Wood, get out of your rut. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but? Well, Wood said he would, but we knew he wouldn't. And even if he would, well, he damn well couldn't. But that's Congress for you. Week in, week out, week all over. Now, Wood, he couldn't rest on his laurels. He tried his best to corrupt our morals. He talked about Philbrick, Boudin's too. They're getting theirs. How about you? Now, I like chicken, I like duck, and I don't object to making a buck. But I ain't got wings and sure can't fly, and there's one bird that I won't buy, that stool pigeon. I'm strictly in the market for doves of peace. It is known that birds of a feather have a habit of flocking together. So listen, McCarran, Wood, and the rest. You can't use us to feather your nest. That's strictly for the birds. 
So here's the moral without a doubt. If you want to be free, you got to sing out. Sing it loud, sing it strong. People are singing a freedom song. That's my music, solid with a freedom beat. So keep singing and keep fighting. Our second Talking Blues offering today is Talking Vietnam Potluck Blues, written and performed in 1968 by Tom Paxton, who you may recall was featured last week in our third Mother's Day podcast. I must say that the acerbic song you're about to hear contrasts so dramatically with last week's tender Tom Paxton song, Mother. I guess it shows what an eclectic songwriter Mr. Paxton is. Without further ado, here is Talking Vietnam Potluck Blues. Now when I landed in Vietnam, I hardly got to see Saigon. They shaped us up and called the roll, and off we went on a long patrol. Swapping lies, swapping flies, firing the odd shot here and there. The captain called a halt that night and we had chow by the pale moonlight. A lovely dinner they planned for us with a taste like a seat on a cross-town bus. Some of the veterans just left theirs laying in the cans for the Viet Cong to find. Deadlier than a landmine. Naturally, somebody told a joke and a couple other fellas began to smoke. I took a whiff as the cloud rolled by and my nose went up like an infield fly. The captain, this, uh... Blonde fella from Yale, he looked at me and said, What's the matter with you, baby? Well, I may be crazy, but I think not. I'd swear to God that I smell pot, but who'd have pot in Vietnam? He said, What do you think you've been sitting on? <laughs> These funny little plants, thousands of them. Good God Almighty. Pastures of plenty. So we all lit up and by and by the whole platoon was flying high. With a beautiful smile on the captain's face, he smelled like midnight on St. Mark's Place. Cleaning his weapon, chanting something about Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna. The moment came as it comes to all when I had to answer nature's call. I was stumbling around in a beautiful haze when I met a little cat in black PJs. Rifle. Ammo belt, BF Goodrich sandals. He looked up at me and said, What's the matter with you, baby? He said, We're camping down the pass and smell you people blowing grass. And since by the smell you're smoking trash, it brought you a taste of a special stash. Straight from Uncle Ho's Victory Garden, we call it Hanoi Gold. So his squad and my squad settled down, passed some lovely stuff around. All too soon it was time to go. The captain got on the radio, said, hello, headquarters. (laughs) Hello, uh, headquarters. We have met the enemy, and he has been smashed. Thursday's podcast will feature my two all-time favorite Talking Blues recordings. Together, they speak to what are undoubtedly the two most important descriptive labels which I am proud to attribute to myself, wheelchair user and chocoholic. See you then.